Nerve Injury, Wikipedia Article Audio Nerve injury is injury to nervous tissue. There is no single classification system that can describe all the many variations of nerve injury. In 1941, Seddon introduced a classification of nerve injuries based on three main types of nerve fiber injury and whether there is continuity of the nerve. Usually, however, nerve injury is classified in five stages, based on the extent of damage to both the nerve and the surrounding connective tissue, since supporting glial cells may be involved. Unlike in the central nervous system, Neuroregeneration in the peripheral nervous system is possible. The processes that occur in peripheral regeneration can be divided into the following major events, Wallerian degeneration, axon regeneration slash growth, and nerve re -innervation. The events that occur in peripheral regeneration occur with respect to the axis of the nerve injury. The proximal stump refers to the end of the injured neuron that is still attached to the neuron cell body, it is the part that regenerates. The distal stump refers to the end of the injured neuron that is still attached to the end of the axon, it is the part of the neuron that will degenerate but that remains in the area toward which the regenerating axon grows. The study of peripheral nerve injury began during the American Civil War and has greatly expanded to the point of using growth-promoting molecules. Types This is the least severe form of nerve injury, with complete recovery. In this case, the axon remains intact, but there is myelin damage causing an interruption in conduction of the impulse down the nerve fiber. Most commonly, this involves compression of the nerve or disruption to the blood supply. There is a temporary loss of function which is reversible within hours to months of the injury. Wallerian degeneration does not occur, so recovery does not involve actual regeneration. There is frequently greater involvement of motor than sensory function with autonomic function being retained. In electrodiagnostic testing with nerve conduction studies, there is a normal compound motor action potential amplitude distal to the lesion at day 10, and this indicates a diagnosis of mild neuropraxia instead of axonotomesis or neurotomesis. This is a more severe nerve injury with disruption of the neuronal axon, but with maintenance of the epineurium. This type of nerve damage may cause paralysis of the motor, sensory, and autonomic. Mainly seen in crush injury. Neuropraxia If the force creating the nerve damage is removed in a timely fashion, the axon may regenerate, leading to recovery. Electrically, the nerve shows rapid and complete degeneration with loss of voluntary motor units. Regeneration of the motor end plates will occur, as long as the endoneural tubules are intact. Axonotomesis Axonotomesis involves the interruption of the axon and its covering of myelin but preservation of the connective tissue framework of the nerve. Because axonal continuity is lost, Wallerian degeneration occurs. Electromyography performed two to four weeks later shows fibrillations and denervation potentials in musculature distal to the injury site. Loss in both motor and sensory spines is more complete with axonotomesis than with neuropraxia, and recovery occurs only through regenerations of the axons, a process requiring time. Neurotomesis Axonotomesis is usually the result of a more severe crush or contusion than neuropraxia, but can also occur when the nerve is stretched. There is usually an element of retrograde proximal degeneration of the axon, and for regeneration to occur, this loss must first be overcome. The regeneration fibers must cross the injury site and regeneration through the proximal or retrograde area of degeneration may require several weeks. 
then the neuritis tip progresses down the distal site, such as the wrist or hand. Proximal lesion may grow distally as fast as 2 to 3 mm per day and distal lesion as slowly as 1.5 mm per day. Regeneration occurs over weeks to years. Overview of events in peripheral regeneration Neurodomesis is the most severe lesion with no potential of full recovery. It occurs on severe contusion, stretch, laceration, or local anesthetic toxicity. The axon and encapsulating connective tissue lose their continuity. The last degree of neurodomesis is transection, but most neurotmetic injuries do not produce gross loss of continuity of the nerve but rather internal disruption of the architecture of the nerve sufficient to involve perineurium and endoneurium as well as axons and their covering. Denervation changes recorded by EMG are the same as those seen with axonotmetic injury. There is a complete loss of motor, sensory and autonomic function. If the nerve has been completely divided, axonal regeneration causes a neuroma to form in the proximal stump. For neurodomesis, it is better to use a new more complete classification called the Sunderland system. Role of Schwann cells Wallerian degeneration is a process that occurs before nerve regeneration and can be described as a cleaning or clearing process that essentially prepares the distal stump for re -innervation. Schwann cells are glial cells in the peripheral nervous system that support neurons by forming myelin that encases nerves. During Wallerian degeneration Schwann cells and macrophages interact to remove debris, specifically myelin, and the damaged axon, from the distal injury site. Calcium has a role in the degeneration of the damaged axon. Bands of Bungner are formed when uninnervated Schwann cells proliferate and the remaining connective tissue basement membrane forms endoneurial tubes. Bands of Bungner are important for guiding the regrowing axon. At the neuronal cell body, a process called chromatolysis occurs in which the nucleus migrates to the periphery of the cell body and the endoplasmic reticulum breaks up and disperses. Nerve damage causes the metabolic function of the cell to change from that of producing molecules for synaptic transmission to that of producing molecules for growth and repair. These factors include GAP43, tubulin and actin. Chromatolysis is reversed when the cell is prepared for axon regeneration. Role of macrophages Role of neurotrophic factors Role of neurite promoting factors Nerve regeneration therapies Axon regeneration is characterized by the formation of a growth cone. The growth cone has the ability to produce a protease that digests any material or debris that remains in its path of regeneration toward the distal site. The growth cone responds to molecules produced by Schwann cells such as laminin and fibronectin. Schwann cells are active in Wallerian degeneration. They not only have a role in phagocytosis of myelin, but they also have a role in recruitment of macrophages to continue the phagocytosis of myelin. The phagocytic role of Schwann cells has been investigated by studying the expression of molecules in Schwann cells that are typically specific to inflammatory macrophages. Expression of one such molecule MAC2, a galactose-specific lectin, is observed in not only degenerating nerves that are macrophage-rich but also degenerating nerves that are macrophage-scarce and Schwann cell-rich. Furthermore, the effects of MAC2 in degenerating nerves are associated with myelin phagocytosis. There was a positive correlation between the amount of MAC2 expression and the extent of myelin phagocytosis. A deficiency in MAC2 expression can even cause inhibition of myelin removal from injury sites. 
Schwann cells are active in demyelination of injured nerves before macrophages are even present at the site of nerve injury. Electron microscopy and immunohistochemical staining analysis of teased nerve fibers shows that before macrophages arrive at the injury site, myelin is fragmented and myelin debris and lipid droplets are found in the cytoplasm of Schwann cells, indicating phagocytic activity before macrophages arrive. Schwann cell activity includes recruitment of macrophages to the injury site. Monocyte chemoattractant protein plays a role in recruiting monocytes slash macrophages. Intellurium-induced demyelination with no axon degeneration, nerve crush with axon degeneration, and nerve transection with axon degeneration An increase in MCP1 mRNA expression followed by an increase in macrophage recruitment occurred. In addition varying levels of MCP1 mRNA expression also had an effect. Increased MCP1 mRNA levels correlated positively with an increase in macrophage recruitment. Furthermore, in situ hybridation determined that the cellular source of MCP1 was Schwann cells. Schwann cells play an important role in not only producing neurotrophic factors such as nerve growth factor and ciliary neurotrophic factor, which promote growth of both the damaged nerve and supporting Schwann cells, but also producing neurite-promoting factors, which guide the growing axon, both of which are discussed below. The primary role of macrophages in peripheral regeneration is demyelination during Wallerian degeneration. Immunohistochemical analysis showed that intellurium demyelinated, crushed, and cut nerves, expression of lysozyme, which is a marker for myelin phagocytosis, and of ED1, which is a marker for macrophages, occurred in the same region. Lysozyme was also investigated with respect to the temporal progression of myelin phagocytosis by macrophages in nerve injury. Northern blotting showed that peak lysozyme mRNA expression occurred at an appropriate time with respect to temporal models of myelin phagocytosis. Macrophages do not phagocytose all cellular debris at the nerve injury site, they are selective and will salvage certain factors. Macrophages produce a polypoprotein E which is involved in rescuing cholesterol and damaged nerves. In the same investigation, temporal levels of apolipoprotein E mRNA expression in the three models for demyelination and nerve damage were consistent with respect to models for cholesterol salvage in nerve injury. Macrophages play a role in salvaging cholesterol during nerve injury. Macrophages also play a role in inducing the proliferation of Schwann cells that occurs during Wallerian degeneration. Supernatant has been collected from medium in which macrophages are active in myelin phagocytosis where lysosomal processing of the myelin occurs within the macrophage. The supernatant contains a mitogenic factor, a mitosis-promoting factor, that is characterized heat and trypsin sensitivity, both of which characterize it as a peptide. Treatment of Schwann cells with the collected supernatant shows that it is a mitogenic factor and thus plays an important role in the proliferation of Schwann cells. Macrophages are also involved in the secretion factors that promote nerve regeneration. Macrophages secrete not only interleukin-1, a cytokine that induces expression of nerve growth factor in Schwann cells but also an interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. Expression of IL-1RA in mice with transected sciatic nerves via implantation of a tube releasing IL-1RA showed the regrowth of fewer myelinated and unmyelinated axons. Macrophage secretion of interleukin-1 is involved in stimulation of nerve regeneration. Neurotrophic factors are those that promote survival and growth of neurons. A trophic factor can be described as a factor that is associated with providing nourishment to allow for growth. 
In general they are protein ligands for tyrosine kinase receptors, binding to the specific receptor yields autophosphorylation and subsequent phosphorylation of tyrosine residues on proteins that participate in further downstream signaling to activate proteins and genes involved in growth and proliferation. Neurotrophic factors act through retrograde transport in neurons, in which they are taken up by the growth cone of the injured neuron and transported back to the cell body. Nerve growth factor typically has a low level of expression in nerves that are healthy and not growing or developing, but in response to nerve injury NGF expression increases in Schwann cells. This is a mechanism to increase growth and proliferation of Schwann cells at the distal stump in order to prepare for reception of the regenerating axon. NGF has not only a trophic role but also a tropic or guiding role. The Schwann cells that form the bands of Bungner at the distal injury site express NGF receptors as a guiding factor for the regenerating axon of the injured neuron. NGF bound to the receptors on Schwann cells provides the growing neurons that are contacted with a trophic factor to promote further growth and regeneration. Ciliary neurotrophic factor typically has a high level of expression in Schwann cells associated with nerves that are healthy, but in response to nerve injury CNTF expression decreases in Schwann cells distal to the injury site and remains relatively low unless the injured axon begins to regrow. CNTF has numerous trophic roles in motor neurons in the peripheral nervous system including the prevention of atrophy of denervate tissue and the prevention of degeneration and death of motor neurons after nerve injury. In sciatic motor neurons both CNTF receptor mRNA expression and CNTF receptor is increased after injury for a prolonged time frame compared to the short time frame in the central nervous system suggesting a role for CNTF in nerve regeneration. Insulin-like growth factors have been shown to increase the rate of peripheral nervous system axon regeneration. IGFI and IGF-2 mRNA levels are significantly increased distal to the site of crush injury in rat sciatic nerves. At the site of nerve repair, locally delivered IGFI can significantly increase the rate of axon regeneration within a nerve graft and help expedite functional recovery of a paralyzed muscle. Neurite-promoting factors include many extracellular matrix proteins produced by Schwann cells at the distal stump including fibronectin and laminin. Fibronectin are components of the basal lamina and promote neurite growth and adhesion of the growth cone to the basal lamina. In regenerating neural cells, Neurite-promoting factors play a role in adhesion of the axon and include neural cell adhesion molecule and N-cadherin. Electrical stimulation can promote nerve regeneration. The frequency of stimulation is an important factor in the success of both quality and quantity of axon regeneration as well as growth of the surrounding myelin and blood vessels that support the axon. Histological analysis and measurement of regeneration showed that low-frequency stimulation had a more successful outcome than high-frequency stimulation on regeneration of damaged sciatic nerves. Surgery can be done in case a nerve has become cut or otherwise divided. Recovery of a nerve after surgical repair depends mainly on the age of the patient. Young children can recover close to normal nerve function. In contrast, a patient over 60 years old with a cut nerve in the hand would expect to recover only protective sensation, that is, the ability to distinguish hot-slash-cold or sharp-slash-dull. Many other factors also affect nerve recovery. The use of autologous nerve grafting procedures that involve redirection of regenerative donor nerve fibers into the graft conduit has been successful in restoring target muscle function. Localized delivery of soluble neurotrophic factors may help promote the rate of axon regeneration observed within these graft conduits.
An expanding area of nerve regeneration research deals with the development of scaffolding and bioconduits. Scaffolding developed from biomaterial would be useful in nerve regeneration if they successfully exhibit essentially the same role as the endoneural tubes and Schwann cell do in guiding regrowing axons.